Hi, I'm Rachel from the Entrepreneurship Institute and we're here to share with you a series of short films about the seven skills of an entrepreneurial mindset. Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the skill Think Lean and I've got with me Head of Careers Kate Daubney and Ishmael and Majavid from Scoodle. Thanks Rachel. Welcome to Ishmael and Majavid. Tell us what you mean by Think Lean. So Think Lean is a process that's come out of the world of startups by which you, rather than shooting for perfection first time round, you go out and you test your ideas quickly and cheaply in the way that you can get real time, quick, useful feedback so that you can iterate on your product or your service or your idea in general um, quickly so that what you end up with as an end result is better and fueled by real world feedback than it would have been if you'd tried to make it perfect without talking to anybody about it first time round. Does that make sense? It does, and it reminds me a little bit of Get It Done, in yes, a way it's actually it. moving on with the product and not procrastinating and waiting for it to be in its final iteration. It also reminds me of something that we talk about quite a lot now, which is the move away from knowledge towards learning agility, that you're going to keep on learning, and your process of continuing to learn by doing is actually a really important part of helping make yourself employable, and obviously in this case, helping to create a successful business. I think there's also something, isn't there, about being flexible and adaptable. When you get that feedback, being able to respond to it and use it and think about how it changes your view of what you think you're achieving, which again ties well back in to get it done. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Can you guys tell us a little bit about Scoodle and how this Think Lean process has been useful to you? I think as a startup, um, you have limited funds and as a result, you have a kind of limited runway. So you need to figure out the best way to really prove out your business model, but at the same time trying to keep yourself going for as long as possible. Thinking lean is super important because you kind of got those two things to think about all the time. So for example, um, School has an app and we have a development team. And every time we found that um, our team could do something better, we would kind of change our product development process to ensure that we were working as effectively as we could. I think I approach it from the perspective of mistakes and by that I mean you would always make them no matter who you are or how experienced you are. I take thinking lean as not trying to avoid making mistakes but trying to make them as quickly as you possibly can uh, because the more mistakes you can make quickly the quicker you can get to whatever the right answer looks like. Uh, but the problem is you don't know what that is at the start. Uh, and I think one of the most detrimental things a startup can do is take a very long time to learn a lesson. If, you, if it takes you 12 months or 14 months or 16 months to learn that what you were doing was the wrong way, that's a, it's not a great position, right? Uh, you're better off figuring out how to learn that same lesson in a month. And that for me is, uh, I guess, how I'd approach my thinking. Uh, but it's learning that quickly uh, that is, for me at least, the, the most important thing that you can get. It would be great to hear a great example of a time when you thought, gosh, I really wish we'd figured that out sooner because that really would have changed some of our thinking and, and we could have planned for that. The first thing that comes to mind is probably how we choose to generate revenue. So uh, context, our company is a, an app that connects students and tutors. We're hoping to build brands for educators so they can list all sorts of content on their profiles and students and parents can find them. Uh, the conventional model in most marketplaces, Uber, Airbnb and everything else, is the company takes like 20% or 30%. We very quickly said that we're not going to do that, we're different. But we never actually tested what the right way was. We had great business models with spreadsheets. It added up, it became you know multi-billion dollars, that was great. <laughs> um, but we never actually did it. And now we're testing monetization and we're learning so much so quickly and we're finding real world challenges that we would never have found from the perspective of a model. Um, and again, it's, it's a learning process and we're okay to make mistakes as part of this process because we know that we're trying to get to the best possible outcome for us and our users as quickly as possible. I think I have another example too. Um, initially, the way that we got all of our users, the way we'd market ourselves was very sort of organic. Like we didn't spend much money on it. It was mainly people finding us on Google search, us giving talks at schools, things like that. Um, but what we found was when we wanted to test out a new feature, for those two, three months, you're also paying all of your employees' salaries. So it's, it can be quite expensive to test out a feature. Whereas if you can find a way to test it in a short amount span of time, maybe spend a bit of money on ads, for example, which is what we did, um, because you could test it in a month 
and then figure out what the next best steps are and save yourself two months of runway essentially um, at the small cost of some ads to get new users quickly. So at the point that you're at now, do you think you've got a lot left to test? If we didn't, I don't think we'd have a company. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's always going to be the case, always. So that's a really powerful lesson, isn't it? Actually coming to terms with the fact that there are always going to be things to change and refine and that perfection is not necessarily a good thing to be aiming for. Being comfortable, it's not really about failure, is it? Mistake is a great word. It's a positive thing, making a mistake and, and getting comfortable with that. Was that a big lesson for you to learn about how to come to terms with mistakes and not a bad thing? It's, it's easier said than done right now. At, at the time where we make terrible mistakes, it's like, oh, that, that sucks. Um, but I think as, as a general kind of, almost trying to detach myself uh, from our company, um, looking at the fact that making a mistake can be a very valuable thing because if you get to the right answer you, you thank the mistake and um, because when you think about building a company th there is no one kind of roadmap you do this and then this and then this and then voila you've got a great company it's usually up and down and all over the place and you don't actually know what that path is like and the only way to know is to you know, take a step or you open that door and I guess well, that one was, wasn't the right one. So you try another one and you have to constantly do that. That's part of company building. Okay, so my final question to everybody is if someone was gonna try and develop themselves in this area and build the skill of thinking lean, what advice would you give them? So I think learning agility, being comfortable with the idea that you're going to keep on learning all the time is really important. And I think reflection is a key part of that. Giving yourself the space, just from the stories that you've told, of stepping back and being honest and comfortable with what you've learned, because otherwise you're not going to be able to make progress. Any advice? Um, I think you can also approach your learning in terms of um, things you're trying to test out. So even the way we structure what we're going to work on in our company, for example, when we're developing like a, uh, a new feature for the app, we would think about what hypotheses are we testing. It's almost quite like a scientific approach. We figure out which things we want to test and we come up with possible features and ideas that we want to use to validate or invalidate that hypothesis that we have. And then after the feature is released, after some users have used it, um, we can then take a step back and see, hey, did we validate or invalidate those? Um, and that way like you're constantly learning but you're validating your assumptions and biases as well. I'm probably going to say a, a bit of both <laughs> into kind of one summary if you like but the first part is make mistakes as a process uh, which is kind of strange but um, it shouldn't be an unconscious just uh, you're making mistakes constantly but you're not aware of it um, and that's why I think that the process of saying hey I think this feature would get more students to sign up, for example, and you give it two weeks, you're aware of what you're looking for. And it can turn out that that didn't happen and that process didn't work out. That was a mistake in that sense, but you're aware of it. That's the first thing, um, which is kind of emphasizing uh, Mudge's point. And then the other part of reflection is something that I think we're getting better at, but I don't think we did as much earlier on, which is once something has been done, tested, successful or otherwise, you kind of you, you do benefit from taking that step back and actually looking at what what happened what actually happened have that conversation what happened what you think went well what you think could have been improved for next time um, because what that does is you start consciously learning from those mistakes and you can apply those lessons to the next mistake you make and the mistake after that until you you know you find that right sweet spot uh, that you can really accelerate from I would say two things from my point of view. One is at the Entrepreneurship Institute, we teach this a lot, and entrepreneurship is a great playground to develop your entrepreneurial mindset and have a go at building something. And we run a whole range of workshops to help you do that. And the other example that I think is a great test bed is if you're in your academic work doing assignments, try finishing an assignment, a first draft of an assignment, earlier enough to go and ask active feedback from someone and give in version two or three and see if there's a way that you can get used to this iterative cycle rather than trying to shoot for perfection first time around. Great example. So uh, that's all from us today. So if you'd like to continue the conversation with us, then we can find us at King's Careers and Employability and King's Entrepreneurship Institute.